Much love and respect. Pura vida, mi gente. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, I appreciate you guys taking the time to do that, as always. Today, we're going to talk about Charles II, Charles Stewart, son of Charles I and grandson to King James. Now, I'm going to show you guys that Charles II was a so-called black man. I'm going to show you historical references describing his physical appearance and after you see all the primary sources you will see that he has been totally whitewashed in history so let's get right to the point and right to the sources thanks again for being here hope you enjoy so uh real quick we go to wikipedia of course just to get some general knowledge in case uh, somebody doesn't know or remember who Charles II is. So it says here in Wikipedia, you know, again, general uh, knowledge. Charles II, born in 1630, was King of Scotland from 1649 until 1651 and King of England, Scotland and Ireland from the 1660 restoration of the monarchy until his death in 1685. All right, so dodge the hijack on the whitewash image right here. We'll see why I'm saying that. Charles II was the eldest surviving child of Charles I of England, Scotland and Ireland, and Henrietta Marie of France. Going to uh, his dad, Charles I. Who's Charles I? Well, Charles was born into the house of Stuart. All right, he's a Stuart. That's the second son of King James. All right, so going back to Charles II, that means that Charles II is the grandson of King James. All right, King James of England. All right, Dr. Hajak on all the uh, white watching. Remember, we have videos on King James. King James was a so-called black man. So when we're talking about Charles II, his grandson, you know, most likely he would be a swarthy or so-called black fellow too. Not pale skin like this. Charles II's mom is... Henrietta Marie France, we're going to get a letter of her, what she was saying about her son Charles when he was born as a baby. She is the daughter of Henry IV, right, of France. So you got a lot of uh, royal lineage here with Charles II. And her mom was Marie de Medici, all right? The Medici family known to be uh, melanated nobles, all right? Melanated people of color. We're going to have future video on that, just so you know. So just wanted to have a little reference of who Charles is, his lineage. And when it comes to uh, what he might look like, a lot of those people I just showed you were known to be melanated as well, dark-skinned people. Real quick. Also, again, even though we've gone over this so many times, a lot of people still trying to tell me swarthy means a tan. So even though you could apply it to people maybe with a tan, but in general, originally, precisely, swarthy means dark colored, honey, especially in reference to skin, dark skin. 1580s, an unexplained alteration of swarthy or swart. Let's go to that. So swart. All right, again, we're in etymology online. Old English swart, black, being of a dark hue. In reference to night, clouds, also figurative. Wicked, infamous, from Proto-Germanic Swartha. Old Frist and Old Saxon, the Middle Dutch Swart. Swart. Dark colored or black. All right, dark colored or black. From the root Swardo, dirty, dark, black. Okay. This is from 
Webster's 1828 Dictionary. You guys can see. Swart to make tawny, right? Swartly, duskly, with a tawny hue. Swartiness, tawniness, a dusky or dark complexion. Swarty, being of a dark hue or dusky complexion, tawny. In warm climates, the complexion of men is universally swarthy or black. All right. Uh, definition number two down here says black. As the swarthy African, just like the swarthy African. Black. Yeah, when they mean black and swarthy, they mean just like an African. Swarthy like an African. Okay, is it that clear, guys? So when we're reading swarthy, this is what they mean. So-called black. Swarthiness. A tawny color. Swartish, somewhat dark or tawny. All right, you guys get it? For more definitions online. Again, swarthy means dark skin. Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, swartier or swarthy yes, of a dark color, complexion, or cast. Cambridge Dictionary, swarthy uh, of a person or their skin, dark. A swarthy face or complexion. All right, a swarthy face, dark dark so-called black swarthy dark skin okay dark skin lexico oxford swarthy dark skin okay dark skin you guys get it we're gonna real quick worldhistory.org charles ii of england down here in early life says when elizabeth the first of england died in 1603 without an heir james the sixth of Scotland was invited to also become the king of England. James was the first of the Stuart kings, and he was succeeded by his son Charles I of England. Charles I's eldest son, also called Charles, was born on May 29, 1630. His mother was Queen Henrietta Marie, the young sister of Louis XIII of France. Charles spent most of his childhood at Richmond House, where he most enjoyed horse riding. After his father lost the Battle of Nasby in 1645, Charles was shipped off to safety of France along with his mother. He grew up tall, swarthy, all right, so-called black, and Saturnine. Ah, huh. Saturnine, canon, 293. So we got the actual source here. It says here, Oxford, the Kings and Queens of Britain by John Cannon. Page 293, Charles II says Charles' features reflected his Italian ancestry. On his mother's side, and he grew up tall, swarthy, and saturnine. Odd fish, he told the painter, Lily, cheerfully, I am an ugly fellow. <laughs> All right, so again, there you go. Swarthy, so-called black, right? BBC One, says Charles II, and the women who bore his children. This is a special report they did. And in this part right here, it says 10 things you didn't know about Charles II and his reign. It says here, number eight, pubs across England called the Black Boy are generally named after Charles. It was an early nickname for him, coined by his mother because of the darkness of his skin and eyes, okay? And everybody started calling him the Black Boy, which got adopted into a lot of the names of the pubs and inns in England. The Black Boy. Stars Over England by Mark H. Penfield. Page 129, it says here, Charles II. According to Royal Charles by Antonia Fraser and looks, Charles was an ugly baby, dark and swarthy like his mother. So right here is telling you that his mom was also swarthy. Remember, she was a Medici. Future video on the Medicis. They were melanated folk. So dark and swarthy, just in case it's not descriptive enough for you. Dark and swarthy, like his mother. All right, we're in the book now, Charles II and His Court by A.C.A. Brett from 1910. Uh, right in chapter one, it says here, uh, the early days, we're going to go down. And here they are quoting his mom, Henriette says the husband of my son's nurse going to France about some business of his wife I write you this letter by him believing that you will be very glad to ask him news of my son of whom I think you have seen the portrait that I sent the queen my mother he is so ugly that I am ashamed of him but his size and features supply the want of beauty I wish you could see 
the gentleman, for he has no ordinary mien. He is so serious in all that he does that I cannot help deeming him far wiser than myself. He is so fat that he is taken for a year old, and he is only four months. His teeth are already beginning to come. I will send you his portrait as soon as he is a little fairer, for at present he is so dark that I am ashamed of him. All right? Did you guys hear that? His mom is saying he is so dark. He's telling somebody he's so dark complexion. He's so black that I am ashamed of him. This baby was Charles, Prince of Wales, born 29th of May, 1630. That's what they were talking about, Charles II, his own mom. His mother is describing him in a letter to her old governess, Ma Madame de Motteville. So there you go. His mom saying he was so dark, she was ashamed of him. In the same book, on page 24, we got the description of uh, Charles says, MLLE de Mont. Pensier, that's a guy, his daughter of Gaston, Duke de Orleans, and cousin of Louis XIV, was selected by Henrietta Maria as a fitting wife for Prince Charles. And while objecting to the match and to Henrietta's methods, the lady condescends to say of her royal suitor. All right, she's going to describe him. He is tall for his age, with a beautiful head, black hair, a swarthy complexion so-called black, dark complexion, and a tolerable figure. Continuing in the book, an inquiry into the circumstances of the death of King Charles II of England by Norman Shevers, MD. This is from 1861. On page four, it says, Charles II appears to have borne little or no resemblance to either of his parents. In a large collection of good engravings from the portraits of the father, the mother, and the son, and all of the grandparents which I possess, and from the comparison of many original paintings, I cannot trace the slightest family likeness, except that both he had his mother had full dark eyes, and that while the mother's complexion was a fine brown, all right, his mom was melanated too, you see that? Again, a Medici, she was brown, a little touched when she was young, with the green sickness, the sons was swarthy or muddy, or as he himself called it, foggy. All right, so basically we're trying to say he was darker than his parents. Both Charles I and Henrietta Maria, with an admirable faces, had figures below mediocrity. With their son, it was precisely the reverse. Charles II was in the popular language of the day. A tall black man, okay? Period. What you would call today a tall black man again. Charles II was in the popular language of the day. When they're saying swarthy, popular language of the day. A tall black man. All right, he was so-called black. So-called Negro. King Charles II. His height was about 5 feet 10 inches. Beautifully proportioned. Although, as he became old, his figure grew thin and angular. Graceful and a supreme degree with small and delicately formed hands and feet, spare, muscular, lit, active, and full of nerve. But his face, although capable of great expression, being redeemed by the large black eyes, had ill-formed and heavy features, and when at rest, wore a sour and saturnine aspect, saturnine, which hardened and became intensified with advancing age. All right, that's a description of Charles, again, a tall, black man, swarthy or muddy complexion all right continuing i'm in the book the medici by colonel gf young cb just to corroborate about the medici and how they were referenced or known to be dark-skinned people so on page 811 in the notes of the book for chapter 27 uh this is one of the footnotes number 16 so what they mentioned was the union of Charles I and Henrietta, and they just put number 16. And so this is what it says here on 16. It says, Henrietta, Maria's son, Charles II, with his dark hair and swarthy complexion, showed traces of the Medici blood. All right, they're literally saying, they're trying to say that he's only so-called black through the Medici side. But that's not the whole truth, because we know the Stuarts were so-called black as well. 
Stewart is Swart. Swarty, Stewart, Stewart, Swart, Stewart is the same word. So even the Medici historians are letting you know that Charles II was so-called black because the Medicis were so-called black too. We're in the book, The History of England by Thomas Hakeley. This is volume three. This is from 1839, okay? Almost 1700s. On page 220 of this book, it says here, in person, Charles was tall. His complexion was swarthy, so-called black, or dark skin. His features harsh and repulsive, but his manners were the most gay and affable that could be conceived. He had much wit and he conversed and told stories with considerable grace and humor. He hated pomp and parade and found his chief delight in social intercourse. All right, again, his complexion was swarthy. He was a black man, so-called black negro all right continuing we're in the book the escape of charles ii after the battle of worcester by richard Ollard. in case you guys don't know you know there was times when you know protestants would be taking over the catholics and then the catholics would take over again uh from the protestants and so vice versa they would be fighting back and forth so there was a time when you know his dad was executed charles i was executed and then charles ii came in and then there was a time when somebody else came in, you know, a Protestant, Oliver Cromwell, and they wanted to capture Charles II, possibly kill him or hang him. And so he escaped. He ran away. He was a fugitive. He was a runaway. Yeah, Charles II was a runaway. Let me show you guys how they were describing him in the posters. So we go to page 130, 131, and it picks up with Charles is on, you know, he's a fugitive. And this is his story while he's out being a fugitive. Charles and Wilmot climbed up the ship's side on a ladder and immediately went below to the little cabin to lie doggo until they were at sea. So they're hiding in a ship right here. Uh, we go down, it says that high water was at 7 o'clock in the morning. About 8 o'clock, Gunter, who was still waiting nearby with the horses in case anything went wrong, saw them hoist sail. They were making good a course towards the Isle of Wight as the ostensible pretext for Hedersell's voyage was to sell his coals at Cool. It was afternoon before they were out of sight. Gunter at last felt free to come off watch and return to his wife and family. Two hours after he had left Shoreham, soldiers came thither in search for a tall black man, six feet, two inches high. All right, and this is in reference to Charles II. The wanted posters of that time, you'll read that a lot, they were this is literally what they were quoting you know they were searching for a tall black man six feet two inches high so-called black a runaway so-called black man huh we continue with the book uh, from antonia fraser king charles ii a rich feast of instruction drama and entertainment and we go to page nine of this book uh right away going down a little bit says here, the victory of environment over heredity was the more remarkable because of Charles' striking physical appearance, which was even more foreign than his actual blood. First, he had an abnormal darkness, all right, darkness of complexion, a truly saturnine tint, a saturnine tint, truly black tint. This darkness was the subject of comment from the first. Everybody was talking about how dark how so-called black Charles was. His mother wrote jokingly to her sister-in-law that she had given birth to a black baby and to a friend in France that she, he was so dark that she was ashamed of him, all right? A black baby, his mom telling everybody, hey, I had a black baby. I'm so ashamed of him because he's so dark. She would send his portrait as soon as he is a little fairer. But Charles never did become fairer. Later, the sobriquet, the black boy, would be used, still commemorated in English in signs, okay? The black boy, all the pubs that are called the black boy, all the inns, they were talking about Charles, the black baby, or the black boy, okay? There was definitely a strain of very dark, swarthy, 
very dark story. In case the descriptions are not detailed enough for you, there was definitely a strain of very dark swarthy Italian blood in the French royal family, inherited through Marie de Medici. Okay, like I've been trying to tell you, the Medicis were black folks, so-called black, melanated people, people of color, which might and did emerge from time to time. Anne of Austria was of Henrietta Maria's brother, Louis XIII was said to have given birth to a baby having the color and visage of a blackamoor. Okay, listen, which died a month after its birth. In 1664, another queen of France, wife of Charles' first cousin Louis, was supposed to have given birth to a black child. There was even a fanatic fantasy at the time of the popish plot in the late 1670s that Charles had been fathered on Henrietta Maria by a black Scotsman. All right. Well, his dad is Charles. He is, you know, King of Scotland. He was there already. They were coming from Scotland. You know, they had gone there, even though they had come in through the Norman invasions, the Stuarts. They were already there for a while. Yeah, he was a black Scotsman. So what do they mean? <laughs> a neat combination of two prejudices of the time against the Catholics and the Scots. So it became convenient to refer to then King as that black bastard all right they were calling charles the black bastard of the many grandchildren of marie de medici charles was the only one to look purely italian meaning so-called black huh the rest being in general both frailer and paler oh yes that is what they were talking about again out of all the medicis charles was the only one to look purely italian or black which means purely italian because he wasn't frailer or paler. But his appearance was certainly a complete throwback to his Italian ancestors, the Medici Dukes of Tuscany, directly descended as he was from Lorenzo, the magnificent there is a striking resemblance in their portraits. Bishop Burnett alluded to Charles' Italianate appearance and intended to make a political point concerning tyranny compared the king to statue of Tiberius. Marvel was presumably describing the same phenomenon when he described Charles as of a tall stature and a sable hue, much like the son of Kish or Kush Kish, that lofty Jew of melanated people. All right, so I mean, very descriptive, guys. Everybody's calling him so called black. Everybody's saying he's dark skinned. Everybody's saying how swarthy he is. But they always try to say that it only came from the mom's side because they want you to think the Scots and all these other people in England were all so-called white people but his dad Charles Stuart I is the son of King James a black man Charles I was also melanated and Charles II is also a so-called black man then we continue in the same book we belly flop to page 117 to corroborate that they were actually looking for a tall black man when Charles II uh, was a fugitive uh, in these wanted posters. And it says here, nevertheless, once the hunt was officially on for Charles Stewart, all right, Stewart, Swart, son of the late tyrant Charles, danger was obviously increased. Posters were put out by Parliament seeking a tall black man, all right, a tall black man, a Negro man, a person of color, melanated man. I don't know how you want to say it, but he was a tall black man, period, over two yards high. In view of Charles' exceptional appearance, it was lucky that so many of the English had not seen him in the flesh since boyhood, if at all. They were looking for a tall black man, Charles II. We continue page 127 of the same book. And it says here, and so at last it came about on Wednesday, 15 October at 4 o'clock in the morning, King Charles II finally departed English shores. He had been on the run for six weeks. He had slept on pallet beds, slept in trees, crouched in innumerable hiding places. His lanky frame doubled up in holes for recousin priests, his large body fed by the food of the poor. And all this time, his spirit never failed. Colonel Gunter, the last of his protectors, made the same point. He was amazed at the king's unwavering courage that he never showed the slightest sign of apprehension. The colonel compared the king to Elijah. His eyes must surely have been opened by God. 
to glimpse a heavenly host all around him. Moreover, more mundanely, they had got him away in the nick of time. Only two hours after Charles left, a very different boat was searching all around for a tall black man six too high, all right? They were looking for a black man, a Negro man. Yes. On page 128 in the next page, it's just saying here on the very day of his embarkation, the Earl of Derby, last seen before dawn at White Ladies, was executed. Had he been captured, Charles Stewart, the younger, a tall black man, all right, Charles Stewart, a tall black man, over two yards high, would likely have met the same fate. He would have died. He would have been executed. They captured him before he got on that uh, ship and ended up in the sea, okay? Who? Charles Stewart, the black man. Continuing in the same book on page 183, talking about his appearance again, right? Says one witness of the royal procession commented on Charles II's new resemblance to his father, calling him black and very slender face. All right, so again, letting you know that his father was also so-called black. A little further down, uh, they keep describing him, you know, his hair, his eyes, as you guys can see. And down here it says, the king seems to be a very sober man. It was the 14-year-old George Boddington who ran back to his father after witnessing the procession and reported that the restored monarch was a black grim man okay our king charles ii was a black grim man and we're not done yet in this book uh, on page 415 of this book it says here but the duke of northumberland barbara's third son he who had been born so festively at merton college oxford was generally considered to be the most like charles at 18 he was a tall black man like his father, the king. They're talking about one of Charles II's son. All right, we're going to get more descriptions of his children in another book. But here you go. More descriptions confirming not just Charles, but the whole family as being swarthy or melanated people. At 18, he was a tall black man, just like his father, the king. Just like his father. On page 463 of this book, it says King Charles II had inherited a country war-torn and poor, divided, restless, and suspicious. He left behind him a country outwardly at harmony. So it seems like he was a pretty good king in general to the people there, right? He was personally beloved from his early days when the crowd saluted their black boy, come again, come again, black boy, come again to those last years when he's still basking in national affection all right their black boy king charles ii continuing on page 469 it says witty and kind grateful generous tolerant and essentially lovable he was rightly mourned by his people walking in the streets like ghosts after his death their faces suffused with tears he had been their spirited young prince they're black boy, all right? They're black boy, born the divided world to reconcile. In Waller's phrase, whose restoration brought about the return of East, all right? They're black boy. And we continue to corroborate. Uh, we're in the book, The Life and Times of Charles II by Christopher Falcus. And uh, we're on page 13 of this book. And it says here, given all the attention appropriate to the heir, to the throne, and the hope of the dynasty, the baby flourished, and the queen was soon writing to a friend. He is so fat and so tall that he is taken for a year old, and he is only four months. His teeth are already beginning to come. I will send you his portrait as soon as he is a little fairer. For at present, he is so dark, again, he is so dark that I am ashamed of him. Charles was, however, never to lose his dark complexion, all right? He was born a so-called black man, and he died a so-called black man. And years later, the black boy still clung to him as the nickname, all right? The black boy. That was Charles II. You guys get it now? Continuing, we're in the book Charles II by Jacob Abbott. This is from 1900. On page 105, 
a description of Charles II right here says he was only 16 or 17 years of age, rather tall with a fine head, black hair, a dark complexion, all right, a dark complexion and a tolerably agreeable countenance, but he neither spoke nor understood French, which was very inconvenient, but he was dark complexion, as you guys can see, another source telling you the same thing. Continuing in the same book on page 165, it says here the king had no alternative but to accede to this plan. He waited at Mr. Wolf's house till midnight in order that the movement in the streets of the town might have time entirely to subside. And then disappointed and discouraged by the failure of his hopes, he prepared to set out upon his return. Mr. Wolf made some changes in his disguise and bathed his face in a decoction of walnut leaves, which he had prepared during the day to alter his complexion which was naturally very dark and peculiar so what they're saying is if you read before this you know i read a little bit before uh mr wolves is creating a disguise for uh charles ii this is probably when they're uh, refugees and is being held by other people and he, he needs to hide in the crowd you know so they're saying hey i gotta make sure i i disguise your very dark complexion how do we do that so you're not spotted and does expose them to danger of discovery because everybody knows you're so dark and everybody's looking for a tall black man like you all right so this book right here we've gone over it in a couple videos before a lot of videos actually before and it's regarding you know a spy his name is john mckee as it says here memoirs of the secret services of john mckee during the reigns of king william Queen Anne and King George I. So he was sent, I guess, by the Protestants to spy on the uh, Jacobites. So, of course, that would include Charles and his sons. All right, on page 36 of this book, it says here, Charles Lennox, Duke of Richmond, is son to King Charles II. All right, this is a son of King Charles. So here is his description. He is a gentleman, good-natured, to a fault very well bred and has many valuable things in him is an enemy to business very credulous well shaped black complexion all right black complexion much like king charles just like his dad not 30 years old all right black just like his dad and guys this is a book from the 1700s primary source we continue on page 39 says here, George Fitzroy, Duke of Northumberland, another son to King Charles II by the Duchess of Cleveland. All right, another son of his says he is a man of honor, nice in paying his debts and living well with his neighbors in the country, does not much care for the conversation of men of quality or business, is a tall black man. All right, he's a tall black man, like his father, the king, about 40 years old, just like his father, Charles II, a tall black man. Remember, they were looking for Charles when he was a refugee as a tall black man, wanted. All right, his children are being described the same. We got another one here, it says on page 40, we got Charles, Duke of St. Albans, his son to King Charles II by Miss Gwyn. All right, so he had different uh, mistresses, illegitimate children, but they still received honors, you know, um, Charles uh, is described as a gentleman every way, the bone natural, well-bred, doth not love business, is well affected to the constitution of this country, of his country. He is of a black complexion, not so tall as the Duke of Northumberland, not like his brother, not tall like his brother, yet very like King Charles, but he's still as tall as King Charles, turned 30 years old. So another of his child, a third one, black complexion. So just continuing uh, down here, says Charles Fitzroy, uh, Duke of Grafton, is grandson to King Charles II. So this is one of his uh, grandsons, the son to the heirs of Bennett. It says he's a tall black man, <laughs> a tall black man, about 25 years old. All right. So again, it wasn't just Charles or just a few people here and there that they tell us uh, on mainstream uh, shows and TV programs. No. There was many, many so-called black Europeans and black nobles, especially in this family. All right, we continue with the final source here, the final book. 
it says here memoirs of the court of England during the reign of the Stuarts, including the Protectorate by John Hennes Jesse. This is volume one from 1855. All right, guys. So what I want to show you here is a reference to what King Charles the first. So this is King Charles the second's dad uh, looked like after he had passed away when they had opened literally his body, his coffin, uh, literally a mummy. And this is what they're going to describe him as. So you guys are going to see. It's going to corroborate with everything we've learned today. It says here in 1648, King Charles, a mysterious doubt existed for many years respecting the burial place of King Charles. So I guess there was a big controversy about where he was buried, if it was the correct location, and so on. And then it says here, but all doubts were set at rest in our time by the opening of King Charles' coffin in 1813. So remember, he died in the 1600s. Almost 200 years later, they're opening his coffin in the presence of George IV, then Prince of Wales. So we're going to read what they saw. It says, the coffin was completely full, and from the tenacity of the severed cloth, great difficulty was experienced in detaching it successfully from the parts which it enveloped. Wherever the unctuous matter had insinuated itself the separation of the set cloth was easy and when it came off a correct impression of the features to which it had been applied was observed in the unctuous substance at length the whole face was disengaged from its covering the complexion of the skin of it was dark and discolored right the complexion of the skin was dark and discolored this is king charles dad the forehead and temples had lost little or nothing of their muscular substance. The cartilage of the nose was gone, but the left eye in the first moment of exposure was open and full, though it vanished almost immediately, and the pointed beard so characteristic of the period of the reign of King Charles was perfect. The shape of the face was a long oval. Many of the teeth remained and the left ear in consequence of the interposition of the unctuous matter between it and the cerecloth was found entire. When the head had been entirely disengaged from the attachments which confined it, it was found to be loose and without any difficulty was taken up and held to view. It was quite wet and gave a greenish red tinge to paper and linen which touched it. The back part of the scalp was entirely perfect, so there was still a spot in the back that was preserved and had a remarkably fresh appearance nearly black all right dark skin and the flesh that still was on that looked fresh was nearly black a portion of it which had been since cleaned and dried is of a beautiful dark brown color talking about the complexion a little bit of the skin that was still left like a mummy right i think charles dad Charles the first they opened his coffin in 1813 they're telling you he was a black man all right his king even though it was old it was cleaned and dry and it was beautiful dark brown color so there you go I just wanted to read that to you and we're gonna finish it off right here what else is there to say guys if you're not convinced King Charles the second was a so-called black man or a Negro then you are practicing cognitive dissonance and that's fine you can stay in your beliefs but the rest of us are waking up to the truth we are reading the primary sources all these descriptions do not match the whitewashed pale face looking images of king charles ii on the internet none of those images match the primary sources the descriptions of him by people who saw him Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it was informative to you. I hope you guys enjoyed that you have the sources here all compiled in one video if you need to reference it. I'm sure there's more sources available out there, but I wanted to have at least a good amount for you guys to clearly see the point. And the obvious fact is King Charles was a melanated person, so-called black man. Black Europeans were real. And it doesn't mean they came from Africa because a lot of people are riding the bandwagon now. And now they're saying foundational black Britons, but they're adding the Pan-African Afrocentric hijack to that, saying that these people arrived from Africa 
before slavery, and that's totally, totally false. All you Pan Africans out there that still believe that, catch up on the presentations. Over seven years, over 760 presentations. Get informed. Let go. Empty your cup. Seek truth. No matter how much it goes against your personal beliefs. I hope this video was clear to you. How history has been whitewashed. And how we have received false narratives. Much love and respect. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate that. Pura vida, mi gente. A wow. Robin Dre, Fuzzy Bye.